So we're now recording. Great, thank you so much, Sam. So my name is Francis Bottenberg and I'm a lecturer in the philosophy department and also uh, the Mac faculty fellow for this academic year. So it's fantastic that you're joining with us today to talk about advising in Mac. And this is, you know, a relatively short sort of lunch session, 40 minutes in and out. And we want to try to provide you with as much information as possible uh, about the topic of the day, which is advising. And we're gonna use the chat. So throughout the session, we will be dropping links in to help you out. And Sam does a wonderful job of sending out this recording with all of the links and so forth after this is finished. So uh, for those of you who signed up and now are watching this uh, later, that's fantastic. You can um, access all of this information as well. And for all of the participants who are live with us, please, please, please ask questions as they come up. This is actually a particularly information rich session. So uh, if any one of the panelists ends up saying something uh, that triggers a question for you, you want a little more information, clarification, go ahead and either uh, raise your hand, even better post to the chat because again, Sam is going to be monitoring the chat and will let us know if there's an outstanding question to address before we move on. So we're going to start out with some introductions, just so that we know who's here with us today. Uh, we have four wonderful panelists. So at this time, I'd like to just welcome our, our panelists to say a little bit about yourselves and, um, and what you do here at UNCG in relation, perhaps, uh, particularly to MAC or advising. So first on my screen, I see Heather. Hi hey everybody, happy Monday. My name is Heather Searcy. I'm the Associate Director for Academic Advising in the Students First Office. Um, also a member of the MAC Implementation Committee. Um, thanks for having me here today. Great, thank you. I see Melanie next. Hi everyone, I'm Melanie Hoover. I'm a Degree Works Analyst in the University Registrar's Office. And I've also been on the MAC Implementation Committee. Thanks for having me. Next, I see Aaron. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Uh, Aaron Terranova, I'm actually in the Department of Kinesiology. I was the ex chair of general education. I am now currently on the MAC Implementation Committee and I'm director of undergrad studies for kinesiology. So I do a lot in advising in our department. Thank you. And finally, Caitlin. Hey everyone, I'm Caitlin Serafis. I am the Associate Director of the College of Arts and Sciences Advising Center, and I am also one of the, I don't want to say directors, but kind of, um, of the college uh, communicating and context requirements that go along with MAC. Fantastic. So the way we'll proceed now is essentially with four big questions. Uh, each of these questions really will be in the wheelhouse of at least one of our panelists today. So we'll be talking about GEC versus MAC advising. We'll be talking about KIC or CIC and MAC. We'll be talking about degree works tools, uh, GEC, MAC advising, and we'll be talking about appeals and petitions processes in relationship to MAC uh, and or GEC catalogs. So let's get started and we're going to take probably about five to eight minutes per question and again, please um, audience if you'd like to ask questions or follow ups or clarifications don't hesitate to post to the chat. If you don't want to type your question, you can just say in the chat, I have uh, a question for so and so. Alright, let's get started. So the first question I'm going to pitch at Aaron. So Aaron, um, can you can you tell us some things uh, that you know come to mind when you're kind of comparing Mac and GEC? You know what are important program differences that you see making uh, advising strategies relevant? Yeah, and, and thank you. And I'm really going to emphasize what Jordan talked about is using the chat. 
Uh, I think a lot of things, so this is the first time we've done this, right? And we're signing a lot of advising issues with, with fall and obviously we're gonna see a lot more in spring. So if you have like particular situations and you need cases, et cetera, don't be afraid to throw those in the chat because chances are somebody else has those. So if you have some specific examples, we'd love to address them while we're all here and we can talk about it. Um, and so it's one of those, as we're going through the invitation committee, Every time we pick, we have it figured out, like, oh, we got this down, like, oh no, we missed something. So bear with us, we do appreciate your patience as advisors. So, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I, I, a couple things that I've been seeing a lot with um, Mac versus GEC is the simplicity of the Mac in terms of your credits as opposed to GEC. You know, you're talking about 33 to 34 credits. So you can really start to plan the rest of the 100, you need 120 credits, some exceptions. So you can really do a good job of planning how the other credits fit in because you know you're at 33 or 34. You don't have this ambiguous WI, GL, GN overlapping. I have no idea how this adds up. So from a strictly arithmetic numerical, your uh, your job as an advisor should be much easier. You can plan on electives. You can maybe, maybe just be a good time to look at minors. That's how I'm really using it when I'm talking. I'm in the, obviously in kinesiology, a lot of pre-professionals. We have a lot of availability now for uh, graduate school prerequisite courses, et cetera, because I know exactly how many uh, math courses I have. So I think that's a really nice thing that you should really start thinking about. And maybe if you're designing flow sheets, et cetera, that should help you with your, your numbers. The second thing is, and uh, I don't know if I don't know if we're going to get to it in, in question number four. So I'm going to maybe give you a teaser. And Francis, if I'm overstepping, just mute me. Is the use of the MAC curriculum exemption? I don't know if we're going to get that when we, we talk about number four, uh, but that is also going to be a very very valuable tool to you. So I will hold off a little bit. But if you haven't been to the website, which is linked here, you click on the advisor. You probably should have the, have that up on your screen right now, anyways. Um, the uh, MAC curriculum exemption is actually going to be a really wonderful tool that you can utilize to have your students uh, not double dip, not triple dip, and, and not have to worry about taking, retaking a course if they've already satisfied. So that exemption, I think, is going to be something that you should, you're going to want to have always in your back pocket uh, when you're working with your, your students. Um, and sort of ending on a little bit of a Debbie Downer note, you're gonna to have to be able to jump back and forth between both general educations and be fluent and, and kind of really do a lot of individual advising. So yeah, we, we understand, we appreciate the next two semesters, maybe even three semesters of advising. You're gonna to have to be really good at jumping back and forth and what's good for one student is not gonna be good for the other. And you got to kind of really do, not that you're not doing it already, don't, don't mistake me here, um, but we're going to need really individualized advising. And this is not even taking into account our transfers, which are probably going to need an, an even more uh, bigger area of it. But uh, from a number standpoint, using the exemption and being able to bounce back and forth between GEC and MAC and really tailoring to each individual, which are probably the three biggest takeaways I would have uh, as I'm advising my students heading into the spring. Um, but I'm actually going to kind of keep it a little short because I want to see if there's any particular questions. Uh, examples, et cetera. So I will, uh, I'll mute myself. Thanks, Aaron. And while folks are thinking about taking you up on maybe asking a question right now, I, I want to just echo something you said, which is, uh, this is year one of the, of the rollout of our new program uh, in Gen Ed. So it is really absolutely true that we uh, on the implementation committee are are very interested in hearing about what you're experiencing on the ground uh, and also in terms of your ability to find classes for your students. This is also information you should feel free to reach out to uh, the Gen Ed Council about at gened at uncg.edu. You can reach out to Andrew Hamilton, who's the co-chair of the implementation committee. That's also something that we're working on is creating really robust seat projection goals uh, for Mac and for GEC so that we can we can teach Mac in as we're teaching out GEC. Okay. 
I don't see any posts to the chat just now, so we will continue, but feel free to post any comments or questions as we go. Uh, so the next question we actually want to address is, is for Caitlin to, to start off with. So Caitlin, uh, how did you put it? You said you're, you're a kind of sort of director of, of CIC. Uh, so you can tell us whether we should be saying kick or, or, or sick or CIC or what is it it is, but, you know, really Caitlin, I think a lot of us here want to kind of understand what are the differences between Mac and, and CIC and in specific regard to advising, you know, what would you bring out for us today as, as relevant? Absolutely. So first thing, definitely let's not call it sick. Please let's not do that. Uh, I call it kick. Um, so the kick requirements are um, requirements in addition to MAC. So uh, the College of Arts and Sciences students have to take 12 additional credit hours of breadth requirements. They have to take two college writing courses, which are replacing the WI markers. Um, in the new catalog, and they also have to take an additional language requirement. Um, the biggest difference is, is that only one set of those requirements is actually markered. The college writing is the only one that will be markered in the class schedule where you can search for specifically college writing. All of the other ones are based solely on the prefixes. So each um, department in the College of Arts and Sciences was given the opportunity to choose whether they wanted to be in the humanities breadth of knowledge, the science breadth of knowledge, or the social and behavioral set, uh, breadth of knowledge requirement. And so any, depending on what um, breadth of knowledge they picked, any class with that prefix will then count for that particular requirement. It's allowed um, students can overlap three credit hours of their breadth of knowledge with their major requirements or vice versa. They can take a class that meets, um, for example, biology. They can meet their science breadth of knowledge and also a major requirement. Um, and of course, somebody is going outside, so I apologize if that's being picked up. Um, but they can, they can double dip with three credit hours, and that's the extent of what they can double dip with. Um, as far as advising strategies, that are specific to KIT. One of the things that's really important for College of Arts and Sciences majors is that the vast majority of our majors have room for electives at the 300 level um, in order to meet their 36 hours at the 300 level. And because KIT doesn't specify that classes have to be at the 1 and 200 level the way that MAC does, it's a really good idea to be looking at saving those for students to take at the upper level to try and um, double dip their 300 level and KIT requirements. Thanks very much. I actually see that uh, Heidi. Thanks for your question in the chat. Um, Aaron, do you Aaron, do you want to perhaps speak to to the chat uh, yeah. post? Did you see it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and Heidi, it's a great question, and uh, I was actually thinking about that. So, let's say in the high end, you your students take a thirty four credit Mac because they they had that last. So let's say there are thirty four credits, and let's take one twenty as their standard. That gives you eighty six credits, right? So within that 86, however many your program fills up, and then you will have, I'm not going to say leftover credits, that just sounds horrible. Um, but yeah, you will have space now for minors. That's, I kind of mentioned that in my opening uh, monologue. Yeah, you'll have space for minors. You'll have space for study abroad. So you do need to be a little bit more proactive, especially for freshmen and sophomores now. They are going to meet, I mean, if they front load, let's say they're getting 16, 17 credits and they're, they're knocking out summer session. I know we just got that summer session email. We don't want to put them in a position where they're junior and senior maybe, and they got like only, you know, three classes left and they have a whole year, unless we want to try to push them through in three years. I don't know, but yeah, you, you need to be, we need to be really thinking ahead. Like this might be an opportunity for students to pick up a minor, might be an opportunity for them to do more service learning, might be an opportunity for more high impact practices, et cetera. So yeah, you have 86 credits uh, outside of MAC and, and that's not even counting if some of your courses may, may double dip within the MAC program and, and won't be as many as before. So yeah, I mean, you could theoretically have 90 plus credits. Uh, open. So Heidi, I'm hoping that's teaching. I think this is going to give actually our advisors and our students flexibility to dive into more avenues of their academics that they probably have not been able to dive into before. Um, 
So I'm hoping that answers it. Uh, and I'll actually let anyone else, if they have any suggestions, hop in on there also. And sorry, Aaron, could you just clarify um, what you said about the, there won't be as much potential for double dipping with MAC or for the study broad meeting MAC requirements? I didn't quite understand that portion of what you said. Yeah, so I, I guess in the in the old deck, we used to try to triple dip as many times as we could, right? A course that's in the major was had an attribute and had a marker, right? So it was in the major, had a GFA, for example, and was a WI, right? And if it was a WI SI, oh, I mean, that's like the unicorn, right? We were so happy with those. Um, we're not, you're not going to see a ton of those anymore for a couple of reasons. One, Mac is only 100 and 200 level, right? So a lot of those upper level 300 courses are did not transition down. So a lot of our upper level courses, I'm seeking it from Kin, they're not going to be in Mac anymore. Um, and you're not going to be a course cannot hold two competencies. So it's a one to one ratio. So you can't take two Mac course, two Mac competencies within one course. So that's going to kind of knock that out also. Um, but I'll just use my example, Heidi. I realize I'm kind of spinning my wheels right here. Uh, Kin 220, it's a natural course that's in our program at Kinesiology. Students have to take it. It's always been a mandatory course. It also happens to be a health and wellness uh, competency within MAC. So students who just normally take their natural plan of study within Kinesiology will automatically have a health and wellness competency completed because Kin 220 is already in their plan of study. So that would be kind of considered double dipping, I suppose, if you want to use the old uh, phrasing of it. Um, so just like that, now we have a course that's in MAC, it's in our natural plan of study. Students don't have to try to be creative. So I'm hoping that that answers a little bit. Francis, if you want to jump in there also and kind of clarify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you, you did a good job, Aaron, explaining, you know, the principle of double and triple dipping. Um, you know, this is meant to be, a, MAC is meant to be a much simpler program for faculty, staff, students, advisors, anyone involved with it, essentially. 11 courses, 11 competencies, and you're out. It's also foundational, so we're we're really hoping that in majors that do not sort of front load major required courses in the freshman year, we're hoping that students can, freshmen can benefit, first years can benefit by taking a lot of their MAC courses that very first year. Uh, they are meant to be foundational, and what that really means in terms of learning is that students are uh, you know, given accessible entry points into basic communication, critical thinking, collaboration skills, uh, and other sorts of competencies that they can then sort of continue to build on in their upper levels. So the earlier students can take their MAC courses, the better as well. And hopefully that does free up uh, space later on for students to pursue majors and, um, and minors that they're interested in. I'm going to go ahead and post uh, a link to the MAC website's advising page. This has been updated, but will continue to be updated as we go forward. And, and you're so welcome, Heidi. Um, so this will be a link, I think, that will prove helpful to, to lots of folks here. And again, if you have any requests that you want to see new information or different kinds of information on this web page, let us know. OK, so let's, um, let's move on to our third question now. Uh, this is for Melanie to start us off with. And Melanie, you're, you're one of our degree works analysts here at UNCG in the registrar's office. So what, can, what do you want to tell uh, folks here today about degree works, about its features uh, that, that do support advising for, for MAC or for GEC? Hi, everyone again. Um, well, I think, at least I hope, uh, Degree Works is pretty self explanatory. Um, anything, the key to anything with degree requirements, of course, is the student's catalog year. What catalog year are they using? And that is coming directly from their academic record and banner. So if the student is using the 2020 21 catalog or earlier, then they're gonna get the GEC requirements or the LEC requirements if, if applicable if they're in the arts and sciences. If they're using a 21-22 catalog or later, then that's when you're gonna start to see the new set of requirements, the MAC requirements, as well as the 
uh, kick requirements if they're in the arts and sciences. Um, so the a reminder that there are some students who fulfill our general education requirements by virtue of having some credential. So those students would be examples would be um, they come from the North Carolina Community College and they have earned an associate in arts or associate in science degree or uh, they hold, already hold a bachelor's degree from UNCG or some other accredited institution. These kinds of students by virtue of having that credential have met our general education requirements. So you will not see an itemized section of anything to do with general education requirements on their degree evaluation. You will just see a line in the first section where it talks about degree requirements and it will just be a check off you know, green check mark and says, this student has fulfilled general education and why. Um, so just a reminder on that. Um, of course, with continuing students, I guess a big question at this point is, should they change to MAC? Would it be more beneficial for them to change catalog years to the 21-22 for MAC and or KIC? And we, of course, strongly recommend that the students use that what if analysis tool to do a what if a report for the 21-22 catalog in order to see how their courses that they've already taken fit into the math and kick, as well as if there are any other changes in their program should they maybe decide to change catalog years and compare and contrast uh, what that might look like for them. So what if analysis again is a big, big tool for them. Um, for advisors, just a reminder that the degree works evaluation that you see when you access the student in degree works is the last degree evaluation that was generated based upon when they last had banner data changes. So I don't want to get too in the weeds on this, but it's not an, an automatic real time degree evaluation. It's whenever they last had changes in their schedule or if they had grades or if they withdrew from classes, then banner feeds that information to degree works overnight and that triggers a new degree evaluation. You as advisors can always click the process new button that's on the uh, degree works dashboard and that will give you a real-time dynamic degree evaluation. So we, we recommend that as well. Uh, I think that's all my tips for today. So I'm ready for any questions. Thanks so much, Melanie. Okay. The so, second question, Jay. Um, will credentialed students still have to complete the kick requirements? Uh, yes and no. So a student with an associate's degree has to bring in at least 60 credit hours to have the kick requirements waived and or reduced. Um, it no longer is an automatic thing just if they have the associate's degree. So if they come in with an associate's degree and only have 58 credit hours, they will still be required to complete the entirety of KIC. If they have 60 credit hours, then the breadth of knowledge and the college writing requirements are waived and their foreign language or additional language is reduced from um, requiring through the 204 level to only requiring through the 102 level. If they come in with 90 credit hours, then their um, language requirement is waived completely. And that's sort of the, the weird thing about the new model. It is fairer to our students who come in with um, transfer credits from other institutions, because previously you could come in with 60 hours from a four-year school and not get any of the same waivers that a student with an associate's degree would get. Um, but now we, it's based on credit hour rather than uh, credential for the kit requirements. That's a good question, Jen. I don't know. I We haven't encountered that yet. Um, the question is, would if students um, complete their AA or AS after arriving at UNCG, they do the reverse articulation, uh, would they then have their kick requirements waived? I'm assuming that yes, that's how that would work because that's, they would have the, um, this, as long as they have the 60 hours, then it would just automatically happen on degree works. Is that right, Melanie? 
Yes, that's correct. But one important thing about the reverse transfer. Nowhere does it say the community college will automatically send us their transcript or automatically inform us that the student has transferred some of our coursework back to them and now have that associate's degree. It is on the student to uh, contact the admissions or records office at the community college to have an updated transcript sent to us so that we can then see um, the associate's degree has been awarded and then they get a little special tag put on them in their banner record, which will then port over to DegreeWorks. And as long as they have 60 transfer credits or more, then their GEX met as well as their GEC. I'm sorry, MAC. You know, I'm still gonna see I'm still gonna say GEC for a while. Um, their MAC requirements are met as well as their GEC. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. Okay, so we have about uh, 12 or so minutes left and actually we need to take a little bit of a deep breath because Heather now is going to tackle um, quite a few policy and, and formal questions in relation to appeals processes and exemptions. So Aaron actually uh, sort of mentioned one of them early on in our conversation. So, uh, so Heather, uh, you know, take it away. Okay, I'm going to dive right in because this is a little heavier content um, than what we've touched on so far. So um, yeah, there are a lot of policies and processes that were created um, to help students sort of move through the transition from GEC to MAC. Um, so I'm going to start with the student catalog year addendum. Um, and Francis, if you don't mind sharing the links that we discussed in the chat, that would be great. So this policy essentially allows students the option to remain on their existing catalog um, and therefore general education program, even when they declare or change their major um, or change their academic program. Um, now I've not seen this in writing, but what I have heard is that this year as the registrar's office is changing majors, they are keeping students on their existing catalog um, Melanie, you're looking like, <laughs> this is what um, advisors in our office have been told. So you maybe tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but there is a request form that advisors need to submit um, to have students moved from one catalog to the next. Um, so there are a lot of continuing students that will benefit from remaining on their existing catalog um, versus moving to the 21-22 catalog. Um, and so I think Francis is sharing uh, the advisor guide to catalog changes with you all, which really helps you walk through the characteristics of a student, asks you questions basically like a decision tree um, to help you as you're, you know, working with your students to figure out which catalog might be best for them, um, their original or moving to the 21-22 and therefore MAC um, catalog. It's important to note that students cannot be split right between two catalogs. So if if they're moving to the 2021, 20, they cannot stay on GEC. They have to move um, to MAC. Um, so that's our, that's our first policy, um, the student catalog year addendum. Second policy or um, exemption, I guess I would call this one is the MAC Foundations competency um, exemption. So the foundation's competency transfer students who come to UNCG with 24 or more hours um, of transfer credit, or if they've graduated from high school less than a year before, I'm sorry, I just messed that up, 24 or more hours of credit, and it's been more than a year since they were in high school prior to their coming to UNCG, um, they will not be held to the foundation's requirement. Um, students with 24 or more credit hours are eligible to enroll in foundations courses, but it's not required of them. Um, the third one I'm gonna talk about is what um, Aaron has already mentioned, the MAC curriculum exemptions. Um, so this is intended to best accommodate undergrad students who've been enrolled at UNCG prior to fall 2021, um, but they have to change their catalog year either because the program that they are moving to did not exist prior to fall 2021, um, or because they're returning to the UN, to, to UNCG um, and therefore move to a new catalog. So um, students will be considered exempt from MAC if they meet several criteria 
Um, so the criteria are that they've earned 30 hours, a minimum of 30 hours of general education credit. They've taken general education courses that span a minimum of six GEC categories. And they've earned credit for a minimum of one course that fit into either GMT or the quantitative reasoning competency within MAC. I'm gonna pause for just a second <laughs> because that's a lot before I move into the general education petitions. Um, any questions? It sounds like Melanie is going to check on um, the major change procedure. Um, but any questions about those three policies I just mentioned? Okay. Thank you for sharing all those links, Francis. Actually, that's Sam. Uh, so I've been sharing oh. some links. But Sam is sharing her screen and 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 keeping up uh, as <laughs> best we can. There's there's lots to cover here. <laughs> there's lots. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so I don't see any questions in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the general education petitions. Um, so there is a new process for a petition for transfer credit. Um, so this is for students who want to request general education credit for a transfer course that does not currently carry a gen ed category marker or competency. Um, so this process is student initiated course consultation with an academic advisor is encouraged. Um, and what's notable about this, I think, is that council approvals will apply um, to all students. Um, and will update course equivalencies for everyone. So it doesn't just apply to the student who submitted um, the petition. The next is the general education substitution. So this is a new form, um, but this is for students who want to request a substitution for an existing general education requirement using a UNCG course that doesn't currently carry a gen ed category marker or competency. Um, so it's really intended for students with extenuating circumstances like a technical error or misadvising. Um, this is initiated by an academic advisor and permitted for either GEC or MAC. Um, all these requests are decided by the Gen Ed Council, and these approvals will only apply to individual students and not to like, all students. Um, and then the last Thing I'm going to mention is the MAC administrative appeal. So this is um, like a new option. Um, so for students who are required to move to the 21-22 catalog or later um, and therefore to the MAC program because of their admission status, so like if they returned to the university um, or transitioned to an academic program that was unavailable in their previous catalog. Um, it's a time limited option this academic year and is really intended to, to help ensure minimal credit loss um, for students as they transition from one curriculum to the next. So this is not an option for students who choose to move catalogs. Um, it's only an option for students who are required to move catalogs. Um, it's initiated by an advisor on the student's behalf. Um, and I think these requests are um, decided by the General Education Council Chair. Um, Division of Student Success Advising Rep, Faculty Fellow for MAC and Undergraduate Studies. So now I will pause and see if there are more questions. Heather, I have a quick question and it might just be because my brain is um, crossing wires now, but so the exemption policy, um, makes me wonder in under what circumstances would a student actually ha have to change catalogs um, this year given that exemption policy so let me think through your question francis is your question they're on GEC. why would they switch to mac yeah uh, Heather, can I jump in? Because I really yeah, yeah, just yeah. had this happen. So I, I have a real life situation where a student, uh, they are a junior and they email me and say, hey, Dr. T, I want, I'm on GEC, I want to switch to MAC. 
I pulled the degree works and I'm like, you're like 90% there with GEC. Why would you want to change right now? And they, they had three courses left in GEC. They did the math. They would have two left in Mac. So they wanted to transition over. So I was like, actually, you know what? You don't even need to do either one of them. You can be exempt. You've taken enough general education. You meet the three criteria that Heather just outlined. So we actually, instead of switching them from GEC to MAC, we got them an exemption. So they are actually done with their general education because they had moved so far in the process. So I give the student credit. They actually did the what if analysis. They found out it was two versus three credits but they didn't know about the three criteria that were just laid out here that they were actually eligible to be exempted. And that's why I mentioned that in the first thing, because I don't know how many students actually know about this and, and what they can do with it. So that literally just happened last week. Um, so they're happy now, they're very happy. Okay, great. Well, thank thank you so much, um, you know, Heather, for for working through all of those those policies with us. <laughs> I wanted to uh, add one more link to the chat, which is a, I think, really handy infographic. Oh, sorry, the link doesn't seem to be um, active in the chat, but I'm sure if you copy and paste that in, you'll access this infographic that the wonderful Dana Saunders made. And that basically gives you a really clear breakdown of those different appeals processes that Heather just walked us through. And you can click on the appeals process that you think applies for your student and it'll take you directly to the online form you need. So then there's also, I think towards the bottom of the form, there's information about catalog change as well. So please feel free to, to open that right now so you have it in your, your browser window. We are going to gradually wrap up this session. We have about two minutes left of official time. So folks who are here, please feel free to post final questions. Since we're not sharing this, uh, Sam stopped sharing her screen. So if you'd like, you can use the hand function to uh, raise your hand here. And let us see if you have uh, some comments or questions as we wrap up this session. Anything you'd like us to go back to clarify? As people are maybe thinking of their final questions, um, I dropped a lot of stuff in the chat, sorry, but the next session coming up is on um, Monday, October 18th uh, on teaching in math, diversity and equity competency. And um, the uh, sign up is on there. There's also a quick assessment if you have time to tell us uh, what you thought and how we did. It's a low stake anonymous um, deal. And um, yeah, are there any questions as we're at, according to my watch, 1240-ish? 12, so there was a lot of information presented in short amount of time, but hopefully, you know, you were able to latch on to some relevant details. And Sam, uh, would you mind kind of collecting some of those links? So when you do your follow-up email, great, super. Okay, so just know everyone that you'll have access to all those links again, and of course you'll have access to this recording, so you can, um, if you like, play us all at two time double speed and just uh, go over all of it again. Okay, we should wrap up. Thanks everyone for being here and a special thanks again to our four panelists and of course to our tech uh, person and organizer of this entire series, Sam Harlow. Thanks everyone for being here. Thank you everyone. Um, have a great Monday and rest of your week. Bye.